Hello, I'm here on behalf of GoCognito.net, and I'm with Dr. Strayer of the University of Utah, who's going to talk to us about cell phone policy and uh, as it relates to driver distraction. Now, uh, based on your research and that of your colleagues, some uh, state legislators have started to implement various laws. I know uh, in the state of Washington, they now require you to use hands-free cell phones. Does that do anything to reduce the risk of getting into an accident? Um, it doesn't. Um, even though um, at least many legislators have uh, kind of an intuition that holding the phone is the problem. It turns out that inattention blindness, this, uh, the fact that uh, the uh, problems stem from uh, attentional factors and rather than manual factors, um, seems to be lost on them. So um, they're in fact is really no safety advantage for hands-free cell phones over handheld cell phones. The accident rates are exactly the same. The impairments in terms of reaction time are the same to the thousandth of a second. So you're not any safer with a hands-free cell phone than a handheld cell phone, even though there's a number of laws that have been put in place that allow you to use a hands-free cell phone but not a handheld cell phone. And in fact, there is some concern um, that a law that would say that you could use a hands-free cell phone but not a handheld cell phone might be counterproductive because it could send a message um, to drivers that one is safer than the other and they may engage in a conversation for a longer period of time with a hands-free cell phone than they would have if it had been a handheld cell phone. Uh, if that's the case, it would increase the exposure rate and overall um, be counterproductive to traffic safety. Now, a lot of people uh, conduct business on their cell phone while they're driving. Um, is there any concern that this might, a law such as this, or a law that didn't allow people to use their cell phones would reduce the overall efficiency in our economy? Well, there clearly have been people who have made that claim. I personally think it's a bit of a, a specious argument. For one thing, if uh, there was a law or there was some technology in place that wouldn't allow you to make a call while you're driving, if that's an important business call, you'll make it when you stop driving. So those calls are still going to be made. Um, and when we've looked at uh, things like the quality of decisions that people make while they're driving, their decision making is impaired. That is, not only does talking on a cell phone make you a poorer driver, but when you're driving, your ability to make decisions and to carry on a conversation are not as good as if you weren't driving. Both are interfering because both are demanding attention. Um, and there are other reasons associated with uh, the productivity arguments as well that, uh, that seem to be kind of um, uh, questionable. For example, obviously if there's an increase in accidents, that's going to have an effect on traffic flow. Um, drivers tend to drive a little slower and become obstacles uh, in the flow of traffic. Um, and We've done some modeling with uh, some colleagues in civil engineering where we've been able to estimate that in rush hour traffic with fairly dense uh, um, levels of traffic on the road, uh, maybe up to 10% of your commute time is caused by other drivers who are talking on the cell phone. So if you take into account the uh, overall impact of um, having everyone's commute time increased by um, 10%, um, that turns out to be a very large cost. Not only are there costs in terms of people's time and some uh, health consequences associated with driving and congested traffic, but there are also consequences in terms of increased energy consumption and degradation in air quality. So when people are talking on a cell phone, um, there are some real obvious impairments associated with accident rates. There are some hidden costs associated with uh, poor decision making. Um, and there are hidden costs in terms of increased commute times and uh, increased consumption of fuel and degradation of air quality that need to be factored in. And when you factor all those things in, the, uh, the costs of using a cell phone um, oftentimes outweigh the benefits associated with using them. Because of your expertise in the area, you're often an expert witness in court cases. What is the overall effect you've noticed um, on the public from driving while talking on cell phones? When people have um, a son or daughter who's killed um, or a family member who's killed um, by someone who's talking on a cell phone, um, it's devastating. Some estimates suggest that 80% of accidents involve some form of driver distraction. 
Um, cell phones are at the top of that queue, but there are a lot of things that are out there that are impairing drivers as well. And what you're seeing is more and more of a, of a, of a community-based effort to say that we're not uh, going to accept uh, people who are driving down the road not paying attention to the road, that driving has a responsibility associated with it, and if you're going to be hitting or injuring or killing some of our kids, we're not going to accept it. And so you see at the local level, at the state level, and at the national level, um, the impact of those, uh, um, of those uh, kind of grassroots efforts uh, starting to, to uh, take hold much the same way that we saw with uh, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. Right, Dr. Schrader, thanks so much for talking to us on driver distraction and the way in which research can inform public policy and make a difference. Sure, thanks.